Hey, Sunday drive home on a Monday. <laughs> when it gets you, yes, 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 yes. When it gets you, yes. I remember one time we changed, uh, we had a Tuesday morning Bible class and we we changed it to the Wednesday morning, but because, you know, Lutherans don't like change, we still called it the Tuesday morning Bible study that met on Wednesday. <laughs> but everything's changing. Look, you see this out here? This is Austin, Texas. It looks like, by the way, that the uh, commute time is gonna we'll have plenty of time to record uh, a sunday drive home that, that that's that's for sure uh but i got god, god be praised it was installed uh at saint paul lutheran church and the jesus lutheran church of the deaf uh, yesterday and uh started working uh today i'm sorry it's been a high it's been kind of a nutty uh, few weeks i still got videos to edit from spain and all sorts of stuff but i thought we'd talk a little bit about what Pastor Melius preached on Galatians uh, chapter 5 yesterday for the installation. Uh, someone, I'll forget, someone uh, remind me in the comments and I'll try to pin a comment with a link to the sermon if I can find it. It's a glorious sermon. It was really, I was really um, humbled and delighted that, that Pastor, who's one of the best preachers uh, that I've ever heard, that he was able to come and preach for the service. And he preached on the distinction between law and gospel which is what Paul is teaching in Galatians. And it was like listening to Luther preach on Galatians. It was so great. Uh, because Pastor Melius made the point, this is right, that law and gospel, the distinction between law and gospel is not a matter of balance. It's not like a chemistry experiment or something where you're um, trying to get this much law and this much gospel or something like that. It instead, like, like the Bible, 60% law, 40% gospel, or a sermon should be 30% law or 70% gospel. He said it's not a matter of balance, but it's a matter of allocation. It's a, it's a matter of where the thing is active. And, uh, and Pastor Melius, like Luther, says that the gospel has to be everything in the conscience and the law has to be everything in your life so so that we live in a way um, we live in two realms we live before god and we live before the neighbor and when it comes to living before god that's what the gospel uh, is doing how do i stand before god how what does god think of me what is my what is my position or or my status with god that's the question that the gospel is answering. And the gospel says, this is great, the gospel says that our sins are forgiven, that we're righteous and holy, that we're perfect in God's sight, that we're covered with the robe of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, so that we are as holy and as righteous and as perfect as Jesus is. <laughs> This is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. Uh, he, he made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us. That's the atonement. That's the death of Jesus on the cross. To be sin so that Jesus was sin. Our sin, your sin and my sin. He was sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So the righteousness that we have is the righteousness of God. Whew. I mean, that's the God. That's the gospel that tells us when that that God is not that God is not counting our sins against us. He's not accounting our sins to our name. He's he's not angry with us. So, so how do I stand before God? I stand before God by faith, not by works. I stand before God by the blood of Jesus. I stand before God because of, because of the cross. We just came from the hospital back there. And we were looking at the text, John 14, be, uh, where, where Jesus says, I'm, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
In my Father's house are many rooms. Now, the reason why Jesus goes to prepare a place for us is not because it's like there's so many people coming to heaven, there's, they, they're running out of space. They got to go and like put a bedroom on the back of the garage because there's no room. And Jesus is up there like home remodeling. That's not the space is not the problem in heaven and the resurrection. It's not a matter of space. It's a matter of righteousness. There's no place for you and me in heaven because we're sinners and God is holy and His holiness fills the uh, heavens. And because of that, there's, not a, there's just not a way for us to be there. We have to be removed from that holiness. But Jesus goes to prepare a place, and he does that on the cross. He, he prepares a place for us by his death on the cross. A place for us in the holiness of God. A place for us before the face of God. A place for us to stand on the judgment day because we are clothed in his righteousness. So when it comes to our life before God, we live by faith in the Son of God who died for us. No longer I who live. Christ lives in me. And so forth. And then we also live in this world amongst our neighbors. And when it comes to our life with our neighbors, we have just the law. That's what tells us what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to love. And it gives shape to that love. Remember how the commandments give shape to our love for one another? It's glorious. So we want to know what, what, what I'm supposed to do at home or what I'm supposed to do at church or what I'm supposed to do here on I-35. That's the law's job, it tells me. And there's no, And there's no, like... My life in this world is a mixture of law and gospel. It's all law. Or my life before God is a mixture of, of, of in, in the conscience, is a mixture of law. It's all gospel, see? It's a matter of allocation. It's fantastic. So sometimes, and this is how Luther talks in his Galatians commentary, it's glorious. Someone also remind me, I'll look up the quotes and put them in the, in the comments or description or something. But Luther says things like, look, when you go to stand before God, you have to forget the law. And when you go and stand before your neighbor, you got to forget the gospel. Ah. And Pastor Melius reminded us of that yesterday. He used the illustration of the cow herding because he says it sounds pretty simple, this division of law and gospel. And it's a simple task like this. It's imagine if you're sitting there and the task, this is a good Texas illustration. And the task is you're supposed to separate the cows. And so you have a stick and the cows lined up and they come at you and the black cows go to the left and the, and the red cows go to the right. And so you're just dividing the cows. And it's no problem. That's, that's the sim simplicity of dividing law and gospel. But he says, that, but the problem is that it's, they don't come at you just like that. They just bum rush you. This whole herd of cows just come and they're unruly. And you get on the mix and you're trying to you're trying to send this cow to the right spot and it goes to the wrong and you gotta go chase them down. And in the meantime, they all go over here and everything else like this and so. So this distinction between law and gospel is easy as we think about it, but when it really comes down to it, the law, like an unruly cow, is running into the pasture of the conscience. That's, and that's pride and despair. Or the gospel runs into the, into the pasture vocation, and that's antinomianism. So this is this distinction between law and gospel that that we practice all our lives. And it's probably why the Lord sends pastors to be doing this work. So if you uh, spot any cows around here, let me know. I'm going to herd them into the right spot. Hmm. 
There's some line in Luther where I'm on, I'm on Luther now. I think it must be. I think it's in his sermons on the Epistle First John. And he says this, he says that, that the whole of our faith and the whole of our religion and the whole of our doctrine can be summarized in this, faith and love. Faith, that's the gospel. We live, by, we live in faith towards God. And love is the summary of the law, and we live in love for one another. So may God grant you YouTube theologians and all of us, me too, an increase in faith and love. That we know we stand, that we have nothing to fear before God, that we stand before God as holy and forgiven and clean, as free, and that we stand before our neighbors as servants to bless them and serve them and love them. Oh, God grant it for Christ's sake. That's a Sunday drive home on Monday. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Woo!